I'm gonna solve this the same way I did the first time I ever did it. And I knew at the time that it's risky, right? There's a, there's a trap potentially here. Now, maybe it doesn't seem obvious to you, but we're at question 21. I can just tell by the way this thing is built that there's a potential trap. And I, I have a bunch of equations. So my strategy brain goes, okay, plug points into equations, right? What happens if I have actual values instead of the uh, just blank equations that they're giving me? Now, the problem with plug points into equations here is we don't actually have points, right? We don't know what X is, but that's where we can kind of do that arithmetized strategy and make up a value of X. So I forget exactly what I did the first time I did it, but I do remember kind of messing up a little bit. So I said something like, okay, what if X were just like one, right? All right, so a right, circular, a right rectangular prism has a height of nine inches. Uh, the length of the prism's base is X inches, which is seven inches more than the width of the prism's base. So right away I was like, oh, okay, okay. So my volume is length times width, uh, times height. We have the height, right? We need the length and the width. So I just made up the length is one, but then if I read this, one is seven inches more than the width. That doesn't make any sense, right? Because then the width is negative six. So that's okay, this is, that, this is something that happens, when, especially with stories where we just pick a random number. Sometimes that random number doesn't work because it produces like a, an invalid result. And that's okay, we can always adjust, right? So let's just make it instead of a, a, a length of one, let's make it a length of 10. Now, if that's 10, that is seven inches more than the width. So what's the width? The width is three, right? So we can adjust my equation here, and now it's just, okay, 10 times three is 30, 30 times nine is 270. So that's my answer. And what I'm looking for then is the equation that produces that same exact answer, right? So I would just go to choice A, I would say, okay, X was 10, so 10 times 19 times 17. Well, I don't need the calculator to know that that's crazy big, right? That's way more than 270, right? Because already 19 times 17 is gonna be in like, you know, the thousands, I think. So we're already too big. So uh, that's not gonna be right. And then here we have 10 times 19 times three. Well, that it seems closer, right? Because we got the three there, but no, 10 times 19 times three is not what we did originally, this is 570, so that's no good. And then here we've got nine times 10 times 17. And we also know that this is wrong, nine times 10 times 17 is 1,530. But this is the trap. That's what they hope you pick. Because they know when you read this part, that the, the, the X is seven inches more than the width, they know you're gonna be like, okay, I gotta do X, plus seven somewhere, right? And if you're not really thinking about it deeply and you're not proving it, then choice C becomes really, really tempting. But it's exactly what, like basically, I avoided the trap by using the bad number in the beginning because I was originally like, oh, wait a minute, I can't use one because I have to subtract seven and so that doesn't make any sense. And so now I can see, okay, nine times 10, 10 minus seven is three, that's exactly what I did, that's 270, that's the answer. But the trap answer of C was never really kind of possible for me to pick. I, I knew like what I needed and that just gave me a bad number. And this is why even when you are really good at thinking about things conceptually, it's better to just play it safe. You know on a question 21, they're gonna try to trick you. And maybe 99 out of 100 times, you see it coming and you avoid the trap. But one out of 100 is gonna keep you out of an 800 score, right? Like if you're looking for that top score, you, you have to be perfect. And being really, really good at math is only one piece of that, right? You need to be good at math, but you also need to be good at the SAT. You need to be good at the strategies. And this is a great example where like, because I'm thinking strategically, because I know how this test works, I was able to avoid a trap answer. So if you picked C, look at your scratch paper. Did you have any work for this question? Because if you didn't, then you walked right into that trap and you deserve to get it wrong. You did exactly what the SAT wanted you to do and you should have seen that coming. So on questions like this, think back to plug points into equations. You might need to make up a point, but it's better than thinking about it conceptually. Once you have dimensions for this prism, you can actually just do geometry and it makes it so much easier and basically impossible to fall for the trap.